Blessings, blessings, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Word Unfiltered, where there's no filter, no chasers to the Word of God. I don't take from it, I don't add to it, for He has already perfected it enough. So, here in this video, we have an interview between Vlad TV here on YouTube and Bishop, I think he's a bishop, or Pastor Marvin Sapp, who is also a very well-known Christian music artist, okay? One of his most popular songs is... I said he saw the best in me When everyone else around could only see the worst in me <laughs> That's one of his most popular songs. Of course, he has a many songs. Um, and with Vlad TV, usually Vlad uh, interviews a lot of secular artists or secular actors and stuff like that. So it was surprising to see this video come across my YouTube feed, okay, with Marvin Sapp. I wanted to know what was going on, you know, because me being a follower of Christ and knowing Bishop Marvin Sapp is also... A follower of Christ and a gospel artist. I wanted to know what type of questions would Vlad, who usually interviews secular artists, what type of questions would he have to ask or would he ask Bishop Marvin Sapp? So I watched most of the interview and I noticed, okay, I noticed one thing that is very common when secular people, people who are of the world, like Oprah and other, you know, talk show hosts, when they interview someone who is supposed to be of the church or follow a follower of Christ, a pastor or a, a gospel singer um, or a gospel musical artist, it's always this one thing, this one question that they ask these pastors or these gospel music artists. What, what is your thoughts on homosexuality and Christianity? And it's always something dealing with homosexuality. And of course, Bishop or Pastor Marvin Sapp was not able to go through this interview without also being asked that question concerning homosexuality. How does he feel about homosexuality? So let's see how he answers this question. You know, Little Nas X, I'm sure you're familiar with him. Yeah, familiar with his music, yeah. You're familiar with it? Okay, good. Yeah. He said growing up in a Christian family, uh, you know, him being gay, he, he was made to feel like it was against the church. I'm just trying to figure out, and y'all excuse the wardrobe change. I was cold. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out why did he, why was this uh, the lead into this, the question concerning homosexuality? Like, why was Little Nas X brought up? Um, and with Lil Nas X saying that him being a homosexual, he was made to feel like it was against the church. It wasn't against the church per se, not the church building, okay? But it, it's against God. When we sin, we sin against God. And when you are practicing sin, you're committed to sin, it's against God, okay? Um it's against God. It's against his standards. It's against his commandments. He said the sexual immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it, your concern shouldn't even be if it's against the church, if it's against the people in the church. Your concern should be, am I sinning against God? Because at the end of the day, he's the righteous judge, okay? He's the one that's going to... Um, make the final determination whether you find yourself in heaven or whether you find yourself in hell. Whether he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or whether he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. So it, you shouldn't even be concerned if it's against the church. No, it's against God. Like, <laughs> that's that should be our focus. Not what's against the church, but what's against God. Because some of the things that are for God, some of the things that are for Christ, for his standards, is also against the church, if you get my drift. Y'all comment if you know what I mean when I say that, okay? Some of the things that are for God and that are uh, according to God's standards, his commandments are against the church. Comment. So let's finish. Let's finish watching thoughts on homosexuality and Christianity? 
I, I don't I don't know if it's against the church. Uh, I, I just do know that there are some biblical things as it pertains to everybody has their own particular theology. And I, I don't understand why people just can't straight up just just say what the word of God says. The sexual immoral homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not against the church. It's against God. It is an abomination. That's what God's word says. Why is that so hard to answer? Like people, there should be no different theology. It should be what the word of God says. That's the only theology we should be living by and we should be speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ, not our own theologies. So there should, if everyone is following the same Bible, the same scriptures, there should not be any difference in theology. I, I, I don't understand. Some people's theology has evolved as it pertains to um, homosexuality being in the church. Uh, and when you study the Bible, you would know to notice that that was a problem or was an issue. It still is a problem. And this is why he's having a hard time even answering this question because of this cancel culture that we have why do y'all keep asking Christians, okay, pastors and bishops and stuff, this question? And y'all really don't want to hear the answer. And now these pastors and bishops, because they know these people don't really want to hear the truth, they have to kind of sugarcoat and, and go around the world before they give, instead of just giving a direct answer because of cancel culture, okay? which I'm going to put a clip in that where he stated um, before this question was, was asked that, you know, he likes his lifestyle. So he's careful about what he does. Okay. And he's also careful about what he says because of cancel culture. Why you, you already know how as Christians, what we believe and how we feel concerning homosexuality. Um, so why you keep asking Christians that and you really don't want to know the truth. And now these these pastors who are in the limelight, okay, they just go all the way around the world. <laughs> and I, I love Marvin Sapp. Um, I, I'm praying for him because I know it's hard to be at the forefront, but it's this it's it's time out for any type of compromising, any type of um appearance. Of compromising just be straightforward okay what would Jesus do what would Jesus say if he was asked that question okay we know what he would say because it's not a, it, it wouldn't be based on our theology it would be based on the Word of God and that's the problem here the church is, is going on their own theology and just forgetting what the true Word of God says you know I'm a heterosexual man I, I believe in, you know, a man and a woman being together. Um, I'm not going to say, nor will I ever put anybody in heaven or hell because of what they decide to do. Um, so y'all let me know in the comments. Do y'all think he answered the question? You know, what do you feel about homosexuality? Was that a straightforward question like or do y'all think it was him going around the bush okay going around the world to not really answer it but answer it um instead of just saying you know i believe that they will not inherit the kingdom of god i believe it's against god i believe it's sin it's, it's sinful against god it's an abomination because this is what the word of god says um but him saying, you know, he's a heterosexual male and he believes that a man and a woman should be together. Is that him answering the question, but in a nice way, kind of sugarcoating it and making it soft, you know, to the touch? What y'all think in the comments? I don't know. I don't know why people, this this, this should have been straightforward, in my opinion. Okay, it should have been a straightforward answer. But, um, you know, who am I? You know, my platform is little, so... You know, but I don't know. This compromising, you know, people people scared. People are scared to be to be canceled. But I'd rather be canceled by the world than to be canceled 
by God. Like that's the cancellation I am determined, okay, will not happen. I do not want to be canceled by God. The world can cancel me all day. Long as God keeps me activated, okay? Holy Spirit, activate. <laughs> Holy Spirit, activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit, oh, no. Oh, no. activate. I want to say, nor will I ever put anybody in heaven or hell because of what they decide to do, um, because that's a God decision. He's going to decide where people end up based upon their lifestyle. Um, and this is true. God does decide where people are going to end up. And he said it in his word. You know, and it's not you speaking the truth is not putting a person in heaven or hell because at the end of the day, God knows if that person is going to come into repentance and be transformed by the renewing of their mind, if they're going to decide to be born again and live according to God's ways, his standards and his commandments. Like we, you know, we all had to decide that some of us were liars. Some of us were alcoholics. Some of us were drug addicts, you know. Some of us were fornicators, adulterers, idolaters. Some of us, you know, we found ourselves in a lot of these different sins. Um, but we had to come to the knowledge of who God was, you know. And, and I know many people preached against alcohol, alcoholism. Is that how you pronounce it? Alcoholism. <laughs> many people preached against that. Many people preached against, you know, being addicted to drugs or, you know, doing drugs. Many, many people preach on that. They still do. They still preach on fornication. Okay. Every time I went to church, even though I was fornicating and stuff. And if sometime I would go to church, even though I wouldn't participate in the things of the church, but I would go there just to get ministered to. They preached on, you know, sleeping or living with the man that you're not married to. And it wasn't taboo. Like it wasn't like people were scared to preach on it. But for some reason with this lifestyle, people, they, they're hesitant to speak on it. And I know it's because of the state of the world that the world is in where they're trying to get everyone to accept this. Our children is learning about it in schools. <laughs> like children who aren't, aren't even on the correct reading level for their grade or math level for their grade but they have time to teach about sexual orientation I, I don't understand that um but we can't compromise there there's no compromising the bible says you either hot or you cold if you lukewarm god will spew you out of his mouth it, you you make him sick to his stomach where he's ready to vomit you out of his mouth I want to be in the mouth of God, okay? I want my name to be in the mouth of God, okay? I want to be a sweet-smelling savior, okay? I want to be good to his taste buds, okay? I want to be in his thoughts and his plans. I want to be on the on his list of things to do, okay? In a in a, a good way. Things to do. I don't know about anybody else. If that's you, if you want to be in the mouth of God, do you understand what that means to be in the mouth of God? Comment. I want to be in the mouth of God. Comment. But we're going to, let's finish up this interview. Uh, and the reality is, is that whatever you are, you can be born again, period. Um, and, and that's what the Bible declares. I say, well, well, I'm gay. Be born again. You know, well, I'm straight. Be born again. Uh, so this part, yes, I do agree with no matter what you must be born again. And that's why many of them who say I was born this way, be born again, which I don't believe in that because like I always say, no child was born having sexual desires okay so you couldn't this whole lifestyle is based on who you are sexually or intimately attracted to okay no child is born having these type of desires so you couldn't be born this way but if you was like he said be born again he also states further on in this interview um that sometimes people use the church as an excuse to stay the way they are. And I definitely agree with that. They love to pass the buck to the church. Oh, because there's fake people in the church. I'm never going to church again. Oh, because, you know, there's pastors in the church who are sleeping around. I'm never going to church again. No, you just need to go to another church where the pastor is living right. Okay? 
Like, but if you expect to go to a church and everybody is perfect, once you step in there, there's going to be flaws in the church. <laughs> you find a church where everyone is perfect. As soon as you join that church, now everyone's not perfect, okay? Because you're not perfect, okay? That's like being mad when you go to the hospital and there's sick people around. Uh, that's what they're there for, okay? But if the church is under a leadership where the pastor is practicing sin, okay? Living in sin, committed to sin, then no, don't just stop going to church. Find a church where that's not the case, okay? There are real churches out here, but you can't use that as an excuse to turn away from God. You can't use that as an excuse to still stay in the same mess that you're in. It's, it's not an excuse. You can't keep passing the buck to the church. No, you just want to be that way because that's just the way you want to be, okay? That's just the lifestyle you're willing to live or you want to live, can't keep blaming the church. There will be no excuse once you stand before the righteous judge, okay, who is Jesus Christ, God himself. Once you stand before God, you're not going to be able to use that as an excuse. Well, that that pastor was fornicating. So what? it's about what you did in your body, the decisions that you made, okay? There's not going to be any excuse. You're not going to be able to pass the buck to the church at all. Okay, so that was a portion of the interview. Um, some of the other parts, you know, he was just stating how, you know, he's a, a follower of Christ. He's a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was putting that out there, which I was proud of that he was saying the name of Jesus Christ because many are, are trying to X out <laughs> Jesus Christ's name. Some of these pastors, they never say the name of Jesus Christ, okay? They never say what the true gospel of Jesus Christ is and what it entails. So I was proud that, you know, um, that he did mention Jesus Christ throughout this interview. Uh, with this portion, I don't know. I agree with some of the things he said. I don't know about, you know, the delivery. I probably would have delivered more clean cut, <laughs> you know, but um, like I said, and before this question was asked, he did say that, you know, he likes his lifestyle, okay? So, um, when Vlad had asked him, like, you know, why haven't anything surfaced concerning you? Like, maybe different scandals that other pastors have, um, that have came to come to surface about other pastors. And he was like, you know, how is it that you've been able to stay out of the out of the media for these scandals and uh, Bishop Marvin Sapp said because I like my lifestyle so I'm not going to make a mistake where it destroys my ministry um so that one I was kind of like oh I mean it is his career as well as his ministry so I can kind of understand but I would have rather for the first answer to be because I do not want to sin against Jesus Christ. I do not want to sin against God. Okay. That I would have respected for that to be um, the answer first and foremost. Okay. And then secondary, I don't want to destroy my ministry. The ministry that God has placed in my hands, you know, has placed me over. So... I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. All right. So God bless y'all.